I can just think of so many examples of how food was a part of the transformation with so many people that you met. Like, I'm just thinking right now of the the episode you did with Tom, who had like lupus and was really embarrassed of his skin and was embarrassed of not being in a in the relationship he wanted anymore and 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 feeling like life had just passed him by and you Mm -hmm. were like okay well let's (laughs) let's open your fridge (laughs) and that sounds like it's like such a it's it's uh it's hard to find these places of beginning in our lives when sometimes just maybe too much was taken either too slowly or sometimes for people all at once yeah totally i think it's like you just have to kind of be like slow and gentle with it. And with him, it just started out with, I mean, I made more than just guacamole for the record. I just want to say. <laughs> I, 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 that's, not, <laughs> that's not what I was thinking, but that's very sweet. No, because I, I, I just want to say, I just want to say one thing. That was my first episode ever. Andy, what are you talking about? When I saw that episode, here's what I saw. I saw a man who was so embarrassed about how he looked and that he was living in this like giant comforter and, and like, like as in his giant, not comforter, those plush chairs, you know, that like. It was like a lazy boy. A lazy boy. And it was that... a crusty lazy boy. <laughs> Yeah. And he was eating like frozen microwave dinners the whole yeah. time. And he kept saying about himself that you can't fix ugly. And he was so embarrassed of his life. And you very gently asked him to reconsider just a few things. That's what I remember about yeah. that episode. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to make it all about me, but I did. No, um, no but it's, it's, you know, it, even just doing like the simple act of, you know, because he, he wanted to make a meal for, for his ex, who he still had feelings for. And just the like putting him into a kitchen and like making the salsa and preparing the steak for the quesadillas. And then like getting to, you know, the, like watching that like childlike wonder, like literally when I cut open an avocado and he was like looking at it. Like he, he'd never seen the inside of one before because he's only ever ordered guac at his favorite Tex-Mex restaurant yeah. or squeezing a lime and being like, where are all the seeds? And it's like, well, limes don't have seeds. And it, I, I'm not saying that in like, a, you know, a, a, that, that trying to like um, uh, insult him in any way, but just kind of like seeing that curiosity and that excitement. I think for a moment he was just taken out of thinking about like what he hasn't been doing right. And instead he was just enjoying the process of change. Yeah. and the tiny little like golden nuggets of information that we like learn and then watching him prepare it for abby for for that for that ex afterwards and just like and the way that she looked at him like she had like she looked like cinderella meets jackie o and she was like what is even happening like this man is making food for me and he was like nurturing himself and making something and taking pride and putting care and also being of service and like doing something for someone else because Well, I think that, you know, when we learn that we, when we learn about ourselves, we want to change and we want to be better. Yeah. And I do think like everyone talks about self-care these days and we've had promo campaigns for Queer Eye about it. And I do think it's incredibly important, but I do think self-care doesn't exist without taking care of other people. It is a very symbiotic relationship. It's great because you get to make someone feel good about themselves. And also for a moment, it gets you out of your head and thinking that you're terminally unique and that you're the only one going through something. 